hi, so I'm a 30 year old woman and I have been working since I was 18. I did not really come from a financially well off family growing up. We did not really have a lot of money. I went to public school and I realized very early on in life that money meant a lot. And so I made up my mind that I was going to skip college and start working as soon as I could because I wanted to be able to provide for my family. I did not have a father because he had walked out on my mother when she was pregnant with me. He did not even offer child support and he literally disappeared a couple of weeks after my mother found out that she was pregnant and told him about it. So there was no way to track him and she had a lot of other things to worry about at the time so she did not bother to do so either. And my mother got pregnant out of wedlock which is not something that my grandparents approved of. They were very traditional and they actually wanted to terminate the pregnancy but she did not do so and they ended up kicking her out and she was just 19 at the time and she was still in college but she had to drop out because she did not have the means to be able to afford the tuition and her family cut ties with her so she did not have anyone else to go to so she started working as a cashier in the nearby grocery store and tried her best to make ends meet because she was desperate and she also had to think about her medical expenses because of the pregnancy. Just a few months before I was born she was told that she was having twins and that was even worse for her because now she had to think about how she was going to handle having two children when she was barely prepared to have even one. In spite of all of that she never considered giving up and went through it all. I really have no idea how she was able to bring herself to do all of it on her own without anybody's support. But all I know is that she must have been really brave. She did not tell my twin sister and me about any of this until we were 16 and even then she only told us because we had been pressuring her into telling us about her father and everything about how her life had been before we were born because we knew that we did not have any other family apart from each other and we wanted to get to know why. It was pretty depressing but it made me realize that I had to step up and really be there for my family. So I did not go to college and neither did my sister and both of us started working at 18. My mother by that time had made a lot of progress and was the floor manager at a nearby supermarket. We did not have a lot of money but we managed somehow and at the time that was enough for us but with age I decided that I wanted to be able to provide a good life for my mother in her old age and I wanted my sister to be able to depend on me even though we were twins I kind of considered myself her protector I guess that was because I was nine minutes older so at 18 both my sister and I got jobs as saleswomen for a beauty company and it was a decent job. We put together a part of our salaries every month and helped our mother with the bills and the rent and it was a great feeling. I was much better at that job than my sister so naturally my commission was a lot higher than hers. And so after a couple of years I got a big raise and I told my sister that she could quit her job to do something that she actually wanted. I knew that she did not actually want to be a salesperson and she was more interested in writing and stuff so I told her to do something about it because I wanted her to be able to live her dreams. After a lot of convincing my mother and I were able to put her through college when she was 22 so she could get her degree in literature and even go to do her master's degree as well. And now she's a teacher in a high school and she's doing pretty well for herself. She also has a wonderful blog of her own and I'm so proud of her. As for me, I'm now working in a manager position at a different company and life is pretty good for me. I would not say that I have achieved everything that I had dreamed of, but I'm getting there, slowly but surely. And for now, it is enough for me that I have been able to help my mother retire and have put my sister through school and enabled her to achieve her dreams. I'm still a long way from being wealthy, which is exactly what I had set out to be but I'm working my way up and I know I'll get there. And on my way up, I happened to meet my husband. Let's call him Nathan. 
He is two years older than me and we met each other about five years ago at a concert that both of us were attending. He was a friend of an acquaintance and we ran into each other at the concert. He was really cute, so I struck up a conversation with him and we found out that we had a lot in common. Both of us are into fitness and we love the same TV shows as well. On our first date, we also found out that both of us grew up without a father because he had passed away when he was really young and mine had never even been in the picture. We started dating and met each other's families after six months of being together. My mother and sister love him, but I don't think I can say the same for his mother. I don't know why and I still have never been able to figure out why, but she just did not seem to like me. She was very cold to me the first time that we met and that's the way it has been ever since. She has never made an effort to get to know me or be close to me even though I have tried to get on her good side countless times. And there is only so much that I can do to win her over until I get tired and stop doing it. So I stopped trying after about a year of getting Nathan when I finally realized that she was never going to like me and I was tired of putting in an effort to get her to like me all the time. If she didn't like me, I was fine with it because I was only trying to get on her good side for Nathan's sake. But I personally did not mind being disliked by people. So we were pretty cold to each other and I was fine with that. Nathan also addressed it and he told me that his mother just needed some time to warm up to people and she would come around eventually so I took his word for it and did not sweat it with my family though it was a completely different story and he seemed perfectly at ease with all of them he even fit in perfectly with my sister's husband and her kids and whenever we were all together I felt much more comfortable than I did when his mother would be around So naturally, I would visit his mother with him as sparingly as I could because I knew that she did not like me and I did not find it necessary to visit the people who did not like me or value me. Nathan never said anything about it back then, so I don't know what changed recently. He knew that I preferred to stay away from his mother and I'm sure that she would like it as well because she had made it very obvious to me that I was not welcome in her home. Anyway, that was how it all was back then and there have been a lot of changes in the recent past and I'm not sure how to feel about any of it anymore. I'm just confused, I guess. About seven and a half months ago, I found out that I was pregnant and I was already a couple of weeks along when I realized it. I was very happy because I thought it was the perfect time to have a child because we had been married for almost a year at that time and I was ready. But I guess Nathan was not, because when I told him, he told me that he did not think it was a good time to have a child because he was still in the middle of setting up his business and he would be very busy for the next couple of months with his business. And we also had to think about the financial aspect and the implications of having a baby at this stage of our lives. He had quit his job about a year ago so that he could join one of his friends in the business that they were about to start together. He had already invested a lot of money and they were probably going to have to invest even more so he was not exactly at his financial best. But I told him that I did not have any issue with it and I would try to step up and contribute more to the household until his business was able to bring in money. But he was still pretty skeptical about it and did not seem fully on board with the idea of bringing a baby into the world and even tried to convince me to terminate the pregnancy at one point, but I was also very stubborn. And I put my foot down, and I told him that we could either have the start, or I would walk out of this marriage, because I had made up my mind. So he eventually had to apologize to me for even suggesting something like that, and told me that he was just nervous, which is why he was acting out like this. I forgave him, and we decided that we were going to try and get through this together, At the time, it seemed like a good idea because I had no idea what was about to come. I knew that he was not going to be able to contribute much financially, so I decided that I was going to work for as long as I was able to, until I was told not to come into work. Usually, my company has a policy of not allowing women in their third trimester to come to work, especially when they have much higher workloads like I do. But for me, 
My boss was willing to make an exception because he knew what I was going through since my husband was not exactly bringing in the kind of money that we were used to. So he told me that he could allow me to work until the seventh month of my pregnancy, but after that he could not permit it because it would go against company policy. And after that, I had to go on maternity leave whether or not I wanted it because he could not open the company up to lawsuits just because of me. And I thought that he was being more than fair, so I was grateful for it. So I told Nathan about it, and he was content with it at the time. He also told me that he was going to move us into his mother's house so we could save a lot on rent, and we would not have to worry about that. I was completely against that idea. And I could not believe that he was even suggesting it because he knew the kind of relationship I had with his mother. I disagreed with it vehemently and I told him that there was no way I was moving in with her because I knew that she would never let me live in peace if I was living under her roof. And I was willing to work hard and bring in the money, but I would rather pay a huge amount of rent to live in my own home than move in with my mother-in-law just because we wanted to save money. But he got mad when I told him that I was not willing to move in with her. And he told me that I had just never even given his mother a chance and I was still doing the same by refusing to move in with her when she herself had offered to take us in so that we would not have to spend an insane amount of money on rent and would be able to save for the future. So we would not have to worry about medical expenses during the pregnancy or after. I thought that it was really unfair for him to say that I had not given his mother a chance because as far as I was concerned I had given her multiple chances to get to know me but she was the one who never put in any effort she was the one who didn't like me and Nathan had acknowledged it earlier when we were dating but he suddenly did not remember any of that when we were arguing about this a couple of months ago I told him that if it was really about the money then we could live with my mother. But he told me that my mom lived way too far from his workplace and it would be very inconvenient for him to commute every single day. We discussed it for almost a week before I finally agreed to move in with his mother because I was sick of fighting. And he said that he had agreed to have a child with me so now I had to do something on his terms and I could not expect him to always do what I wanted him to do. And I was getting sick of arguing with him, so I decided to say yes at the time because I just could not take it anymore. In hindsight, I probably should have realized that this was not going to last because everything was going very differently from what I had expected from my pregnancy journey. After we moved in with his mother, I was really unhappy and had been for the past couple of months. She was really not a nice person to live with, and the only person who seemed to enjoy her company was Nathan. She treated me like I was an insolent toddler who would not listen to her and had a bunch of rules for me because she said that she was worried about me and wanted my pregnancy to be perfectly healthy so I had to stick to healthy habits. Like she would make me go to bed at nine and if I did not agree then she would just keep nagging at me until I did. Which was very difficult because I'm used to living on my own terms. She would not allow me to store any kind of snacks in the house and said that they were all unhealthy processed foods so she could not let me consume any of it in good conscience. But I don't think it had anything to do with her conscience but everything to do with exercising control over me. I was really annoyed by all of it and I tried to tell Nathan that I did not like living with his mother and I wanted to move back into an apartment of our own and I was ready to pay for all the rent and everything but I just did not want to live with her anymore. But he would accuse me of being biased against her and said that I was only mad because this was his mother saying all of this and trying to look out for me, but that if it was my own mother, then I would not have an issue with it. So we had a lot of arguments about it and things between Nathan and I had been heated for a really long time before this. The only reason I did not just leave was that I did not want to deprive my future child of anything and I knew that leaving was the easy choice and maybe the right one but I wanted my kid to have a father because I grew up without one and it was not a very nice experience. So I was willing to do anything that it took to make sure that my child does not have the same kind of life that I did. 
But it was all pointless anyway, and I really wished that I had left way long ago instead of waiting for Nathan to change or his mother to start being better to me. I had been doing chores around the house, even up until I was six months pregnant, and the reason for that was because my mother-in-law believed that exercise would be good for the baby, and that's why she did not think that I deserved to get some rest after work. I would try to argue with her, but she would not have it and make me do my own dishes and laundry and I had cleaning duties for the kitchen as well. And if I didn't do any of it, then she would start going on about how she used to do everything when she was pregnant and nobody even paid any attention to her because it was so common back in the day. I don't know what that had to do with me, but it just got to me. So I would do whatever she asked of me just to avoid having to hear sermons from her about how hard working she had been. So I guess you guys can understand that I had put up with a lot during the past couple of months of my pregnancy and one day, in the heat of the moment, I decided to have a lawyer draw up papers to make sure that my husband gives up his rights over our child. I think I must have been really pissed off that day. Something very annoying had happened and Nathan did not stand up for me as usual. So I stormed out of the house and that's what I did. It was just a precautionary measure that I thought I should take because at the rate that things were going, I didn't know how long I would be able to make this marriage last because Nathan seemed like he was trying to ruin my life on purpose or something. And I was really angry so I got those papers arranged because he was not even being a good husband at the time. So I didn't think he was even capable of being a good father. And recently, those papers finally came into use after I had been carrying them around in my purse for months, hoping that Nathan would change and I would never have to use them. But about a week ago, his mother told me that I was not welcome to live with him anymore because I was not contributing to the household enough. And that was because now that I had entered the seventh month of my pregnancy, I had finally gone on maternity leave and I had stopped doing my chores from the beginning of this month because I was too tired all the time. And I had not been contributing monetarily for the past couple of months anyway, since that was the arrangement, that I would not need to spend as much money as I would have to if I had been living away from his mother. But I don't know why, probably just to get on my nerves. The two of them thought that it was reasonable enough to ask me to either do the work in the house or contribute financially. Nathan told me that his mother was very old and it was not possible for her to do all the work around the house, so we had to contribute and do our chores. And if an old woman could do everything, then pregnancy was not an excuse for me. And then his mother told me that I was not even required to spend as much money as I would have had to, had she not opened up her home to us. So she felt that it was an obligation for me to at least do the work around the house if I could not contribute otherwise. I was shell-shocked that they were saying these things and then it got worse when my mother-in-law told me that I could either start doing the chores or paying for my share of everything. And there was a third alternative as well. I could leave. Yet again, Nathan did not seem to have a problem with this and actually seemed to be in agreement with whatever his mother was saying. That was literally the last straw for me and I realized I was probably better off not having a husband and my child would definitely not be worse off for not having a father either. No father would definitely be better than Nathan. So I just told him, your loss as calmly as I could and then pulled out the papers that I had been hiding in my purse for ages now. I handed those papers to him and then I walked out. I did not even bother to pack my things or anything and just walked out of the house. I got a cab and headed straight to my mother's house and once I was there I just broke down. I could hear my phone ringing and I knew that he was texting non-stop after I walked out of the house but I still had not responded to any of it. I spoke to my mother and I told her everything that I had been put through and how they had been treating me. She was outraged and she immediately told me to contact my lawyer and file for a divorce because I would be much better off without him. And that was the fact of the matter. She also told me that I did the right thing by giving him those papers before leaving and now I had to file for full custody formally because I could not risk it. And she made sure to remind me to ask for child support. It's been a week since I left and I only spoke to him on the phone a couple of days ago and he told me that he was sorry about everything but just because he screwed up once it did not mean that I had to leave and 
He said that he was ready to step up and had even left his mother's house. All that he needed was for me to come back to him and give him another chance. He told me that he did not even mean what he said the other day and it, it was just something that he had said because his mother wanted to scare me into doing the chores because she thought that an active lifestyle would help me more and he realized now that it was just stupid and not worth risking his relationship with me for. I was very unhappy about everything and I told him that I could not be with him anymore, especially not after the way he had been treating me and allowing his mother to treat me for the past couple of months. And he told me that he thought he was doing us all a favor by saving money and living with his mom. But he was wrong and he was admitting it, so now he wanted a chance to fix his mistakes. But I don't know if I want to give in to him because this is huge. I don't want my son to grow up without a father, but I definitely don't want to put myself through the kind of things that I had been through in the past few months of my pregnancy because these were really tough times for me and I don't even know how I got through it. So AITA for not wanting to go back to my husband after he and his mother told me that I had to either contribute to the house or leave even when I was seven months pregnant? Update one. Hello, thank you everyone for the kind of support that you guys have shown me and I really can't think of appropriate words to express how great I feel after going through the comments on my original post. It's really, really kind of you guys. I have decided to go through with the divorce and file for full custody of my baby because right now it's the best thing for all of us. I haven't spoken to Nathan yet, but I'm going to have to tell him eventually. It has been two weeks since I walked out and I have been feeling very strangely guilty about what I'm doing, but I don't care. I have to think about my future and more importantly, I have to think about my baby's future. So if this is what it takes, I'm ready to do it. My mother and sister are very supportive of me and even strangers on Reddit agree that this is the way to go for me. So what I'm doing can't be all that wrong. Update 2. So I finally told Nathan that I'm going through the divorce and I'm also filing for full custody, at least until our baby is old enough to talk, because I can't exactly trust him right now. He was not happy about it in the slightest and we got into a huge fight over the phone. He called me a lot of names and said that he regretted ever meeting me or marrying me. He accused me of trying to ruin his relationship with his mother and said that he could not believe that I was now trying to deprive him of the experience of being a father. I was really mad because I was not trying to deprive him of anything. In fact, the only reason I had stayed with him all this while was because I wanted him to be a part of my life and to be a part of his baby's life. But he was the one who had shown me time and again that he was not capable of it. And I could not trust a man so incompetent. And his mother, well, that was another story altogether. And I did not want anything to do with her anymore. She was a horrible human being and she had put me through the worst. So I did not owe it to her to be kind or say nice things about her. And if saying the truth counted as trying to turn him against her, then maybe she should just be a better person. But anyway, coming back to Nathan, I told him that my decision was final and no amount of arguing with me was going to change my mind. In fact, it was only making me believe that I was making the right choice by filing for a divorce and full custody. Because he was acting like a brat and that's the way he had been ever since I got pregnant. It was almost like he was trying to ruin his relationship with me on purpose just so that I would leave. He seemed angry when I said it, but that's how I really felt. So you can't blame me for saying what I feel. And I had been keeping these things to myself for a really long time. I can't do it anymore. He needs to hear exactly what went wrong because we were married and we were together for a long time. Both of us deserve clarity and the truth. I was ready to be honest. I don't think he is. But whatever. It doesn't matter anymore because everything is coming to an end and now I'm just going to care about myself and the baby, period. Update 3. The divorce is in the works right now and well, it is not easy. Nathan and I have not been speaking ever since that last phone call and I know that he's gearing up for the custody battle with his lawyer. But he can bring it on. I'm not scared. I have my family and they have my back, so I am not really scared of anything right now. And I also know that I am doing the right thing, so it's fine. I have a good lawyer and I know that we are going to do our best. 
His mother has been spreading all sorts of rumors about me among our friends, but I don't care about that. As long as it does not affect the divorce. She's a pretty disgusting person, and this is exactly the kind of thing that I would expect from her. From what I have heard, Nathan is back to living with her. Good for them, I guess. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.